Hello and welcome to another show off discussion. My name is Ash and I'm the community manager here at Elementor. And today I'm joined by Pauline from La Cuisine, who are a creative agency based in Belgium. The website which we'll be discussing today is lacuisine.be. So welcome, Pauline. Thank you for Hi. joining me today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's, uh, it's great to have you here today. Thank you. Perhaps you could start by just telling us a little bit about yourself. Yes, so hi, I am Pauline, aka La Cousine, as I am a graphic designer based in Belgium, and I am specialized in branding and UI design. So I used to work with my brother Pierre, who is a full stack web developer, and we have created our own company about five years ago, it's called Axiocom, and we are still working together since, but we've decided to make a few adjustments, so we decided to split it into Axocom that is dealing with digital projects and La Cousine that is dealing with a more creative mission and graphics, uh, graphic stuff. So here I am. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, perhaps we can just start with your, your journey into Elementor. Um, when and why did you start to use it? So a few years ago, I wanted to go deeper into the web development. So I started to learn a few of HTML and CSS real basics stuff. As I am more of a visual person, it was really complicated to, for me to handle. So I kind of put it away a little bit. And then we received a, a request for a, a client that went in a website from on WordPress. But she also wanted to be able to edit it by herself. So we decided to go on a no-code solution because, uh, instead of a usual code system. And after a few research, we decided to go with Elementor because the, the, the community behind was huge. So we, can, we could find a lot of uh, documentation, a lot of resources. So I was able to put my, uh, my data fingers in, this, in the web development again. That's great. Thank you for sharing your, your journey into Elementor. And I think, yes, it's quite a common story that we hear um, people looking for a no-code solution. A client wants to be able to make updates themselves. Um, WordPress, Elementor, absolutely perfect combination, certainly in my eyes, and I'm sure a lot of people share that opinion. So, But we're, we're great. It's great to have you on board um, <laughs> using Elementor. Let's, uh, let's talk about the La Cuisine project. Perhaps you could just tell us about the scope and the goals for that website. Yeah, sure. So um, the main goal of the website was to showcase my re realization, my graphics re realization. So it's it's a basic portfolio, but I also wanted the website itself to be more than just a portfolio that showcased stuff. I wanted to be a, a journey into my world, into my my graphic style, you know. So I wanted this to be uh, quite simple and neat because I love uh, minimalist stuff. So I wanted my website to be quite simple, but neat with a few details here and there, some animation and so. Um, so this is a portfolio into a portfolio, if you want. And I also wanted to uh, integrate some print spirit into it because print is really my very first love. I love to to work on uh, on brochures, on books, and so. So I wanted to make some reference that are subtle and mix kind of the digital world into print world. So I'll, for example, like the navigation, I use a, a reference to a table of content instead of a classic navigation menu. So here it is. I think you've done a great job on the La Cuisine website at bringing okay. your, your passions into it. You know, the whole minimal style, the typography. Um, it really works and you can tell that the person that designed it yourself <laughs> has an absolutely keen eye for detail. So congratulations there. Um, let's talk about the, the research that went into this project. Um, you know, just dive into your process, what was involved. Yeah. Uh, so for digital project, we used to have a very precise pro process and very clear steps so that we can frame the projects with the clients. So we begin with the content, we define the structure. We, do, we work with wireframes, prototypes, and so on. But for my personal website, I went a little bit more messy. I skipped all these steps, actually. And I went directly on uh, Illustrator. I made the brand identity and so. 
And then I have a clear idea of the content I wanted to put into. So I draw it directly into Illustrator and uh, just preview some idea of the page of the layout structure and so. And after that, I went directly uh, into Elementor, no prototypes, just go directly with it as it's really intuitive and easy. So I was, was fast, faster to, to do this way because I, I had to do this website after my customer project. So a few times after the day. So that's like, yeah, yeah go, go. And um, this allows me to, to learn a lot more, I have to say. So, yeah. Well, it certainly paid off just jumping in there and uh, and creating the site because um, you've ended up with a great result. And I know from personal experience, when I used to freelance, I would have a very rigid structure with what I did with clients. We would go yeah. through, you know, a very strict step-by-step -step list. But if it was ever anything personal, I would do the same. I would jump straight into Elementor. I'd start messing around, moving stuff around. And actually at those times, I learned, you know, some, some new things. So definitely yeah. not the worst thing to do in the world. Um, and, it, and it certainly paid off. Um, looking back over this project, um, is there anything that you would have done differently if you could if you could go back to the start and do it all again? No, maybe just uh, had more time to do it. But uh, with the step behind, I think no. I think I would. I had so much fun, you know, working in a different way that I used to do, and I've learned a lot more because I was like. Uh, oh, oh, can what can I do with this feature? I'm gonna get into uh, some resources on YouTube and see. Oh, you can do that. Hey, I can go further and even try this one. So, in this way, allows me to learn more, and it was fun because after your day, you just don't want to feel like you are working again. So, it was real fun for me to to do it after. So, yeah, no. no I'm sure. pleased to hear you had a lot of fun fun building it because yeah, when you are building a personal project, um, it certainly should be. Yeah. certainly should be fun so that's great let's um let's take a look at the website are you happy yeah. to share your screen and and take us through a few of the elements that you've built so for my website i didn't use a lot of tricky stuff you know i was really simple with it so the little thing i'm going to show you you will see it really uh i really use the native feature of elementor and i added a few custom code but that's quite it actually so for the first thing I'm going to show you is the vertical navigation over here with the sliding menu that's coming from the left. So uh, let's go into my back office in French. Oops, OK. So for this one, actually, I will show you first the pop up system that actually the sliding menu is just a pop up and it's a feature you can find directly in Elementor. So here's so in French, it's fenêtre modal, but if you have the English version, it's called pop-up. And here is my nav. I'm going to check with Elementor. So for this one, uh, super easy stuff. So I've just put all my stuff here through the navigator. You can see I've used the Flexbox feature for this one, and I just um, import an image title and so I put a little bit of animation that are actually the transform and over transform so really no stuff coded just from Elementor and then for the effects the sliding effect I was on the global setting over here and just putting the the width I wanted to use, the eighth I wanted to use, and also here the animation, the entrance and exit animation. So super easy. Didn't have to uh, spend days for doing this. Actually, one hour, I guess, it was enough. So this is the first part of the menu. I'm going to leave this to show you the second part. So the second part is hitting behind uh, constructor the theme. I don't remember the translation in english sorry Sci uh, is it site parts is ah. seeing, seeing it in french is unusual for me but um uh, <laughs> or, uh, theme, theme builder yeah yeah <laughs> so for this one i'm more comfortable with the table view so i'm gonna switch into this one yeah so i've made a template and template page over here and i'm gonna open with the mentor so quite simple also i've divided my page into two my template page into two parts and for this i use the column system that uh, is 
from Elementor. So for my website, I've used also a little bit of, a little bit of Flexbox and a little bit of the classic system because I've discovered on the go the launching of the, the Flexbox feature. So it has actually both of them. So here again, quite simple. I have a column on the left that is actually the column with the vertical navigation and a column of the right that is the publication content. And for this, this column, actually, I've just put here an advanced CSS class here, my vertical nav, and on this one, also advanced, my vertical content. And I just put a really basic CSS code into the global settings of the template page on advanced. You see just a few lines um, just to, to put uh, to set the margin on the left at 5%. So it's still uh, all the content is still pushed on the right, you know. So this is where my basics, my basic skills of CSS are. <laughs> so well, really, really simple. And that's it, actually, to just have your vertical navigation like that. And for this, I just followed a tutorial I found on YouTube made by the digital alchemist. I just put the thing I wanted to use and, uh, and just uh, put my own code into his so that I can have uh, my own approach, my own results. Another thing I'm going to show you is the cursor here. So it's, uh, it's a little bit playful when you hover things. You can see there is a kind of an inversion, it's inverted color. So uh, you can see on the white, it becomes blacks. And on the color, is like having these tricky eyes of the fish, for example. So for this one, quite easy also. I've used, um, also followed a tutorial, also from Digital Alchemist, I guess. So for this one, I, would, I went to the Elemental part over here and used the custom code section. And on his blog, you provide actually a JavaScript code. So I just pasted it in this area. Just be aware to, to select the end of the body to make it uh, OK. So JavaScript not going to work. And then actually, that was it for this part. And when you go here on the random page of your website, I went here on the website settings and here you also have the custom code and CSS. And there I paste CSS code that also is really basic so it can define the size of the cursor. Also the, the little bit of the animation. So as you can see, the cursor is slightly bouncing. So this is this area. And that's it, actually. I'm done with custom code. So this is the most tricky part of my website. That's a great demonstration, Pauline. Thank you very much for, for sharing your screen. And um, it's great to see that you've used so many native elemental features in this website, um, you know, with the transform and the animations, that type of thing. But you've also showcased how easy it is to add custom code. And whether you've written that custom code yourself or followed a tutorial from a blog or a YouTube video, um, it really is quite easy to add these super advanced features. Um, I was fairly certain that um, a very high-end level developer was involved in, you know, creating the custom cursor um, amongst some other parts of your website. Um, so it's really interesting to see that actually you just learned this yourself from, from tutorials. And that's real testament to the Elemental community and the content that is available to, to us all. When you, um, when you look back over this project and you think about Elemental features, um, which Elemental features would you deem were vital um, for the success of this website? So first, as, uh, as I mentioned, native feature was key because uh, my website, the back office is really, really simple. I want it, I'm, I'm not a developer, so I want it to be able to debug my website anytime. So not using too, too much of tricky solution or thing. I just copy paste, I don't understand. So native feature are key for me because if you uh, delete the special effects, I just show you website still working. So. I wanted to have this uh, very solid base, so native feature, obviously. And into these, uh, I have to mention the motion effects. Um, there is 
they are very subtle on my website, but I use them on every page. Uh, they are re reaction when you over stuff or something or just loading. So I think it brings more of um, dynamic into the website and a playful aspect of the, the website. It's not boring, not static, you know, you uh, it follow the, 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 the visitor and it's provide great user experience. So yeah, motions, effects. I, I agree. The, the motion effects do provide a, a great user experience and it can be very easy to, to go overboard with them. Um, I think we've probably all done it from time to time, um, but being subtle is key um, for success here. And um, in a previous interview that I had with Simon Rans Ransby that we discussed this and he mentioned something that really stuck with me in that he likes to create an experience that rewards his visitors so these subtle animations when you, I don't know, you're scrolling or you hover over something, you, you, you receive them like little rewards. And I thought that was great. I really, I really liked that. So let's talk about your future and does it involve Elementor? Yes, but before speaking about the future, just wanted to stay in the present for a little bit. So just to thank you guys for the reward because uh, you know, uh, just jumping into the web development makes me f made me feel not legit, you know, because not developer, just graphic designer. So uh, this little support behind uh, this exchange we have today just uh, thrilled me and encouraged me to go deeper into my digital journey and leave my imposter syndrome uh, far behind. So thank you guys. So cool. So uh, for the future, I think we are going to discuss with Pierre uh, after the summer, because first we need to rest for the summer. And then we're going to speak about work again. And I think we're going to include Elementor as a no-code solution to provide to uh, some requests for our clients. So yeah, I think it's going to be definitely if our, into our panel of services for the few the months that are coming. Well, thank you, Pauline. Um, and yeah, I think um, Elementor it's uh it really does empower web creators you know and we see graphic designers coming through all the time and all of a sudden they're now able to create these amazing websites that yeah it did require you to be a you know a high-end uh you know developer before you had to know how to code to be able to achieve the things that you can achieve now with ease using a tool like elemental so it's great to hear your success here um, and i hope it inspires others to to take that leap as well yeah so thank you for joining me today, Pauline. The information that you've provided, I'm sure will bring great value to our community and will inspire many projects moving forward. We will be sure to link to the winning website in this video's description. But for now, thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye now. Bye.